Hello, my name is uh, Dr Guy Orchard and I'm the laboratory manager at St John's uh, Histopathology Department in, at St John's Institute of Dermatology located at St Thomas's Hospital. And we're going to talk about today the technique of Mohs micrographic surgery. Uh, Mohs micrographic surgery uh, is named after Frederick Mohs, who is an American chap, and who developed the technique in the 1930s first uh, assessing things on, on mice tissue and then translating it to humans at the end of the 1930s. And uh, the story has been a very long one uh, of how it's become uh, popularly used today. It's a very precise surgical procedure for the removal of very common occurring skin cancers. Um, the most notable of which is basal cell carcinoma, which is by far the most common skin cancer anybody uh, can get and other ones include squamous cell carcinoma and lentigo maligna melanoma which is a type of melanoma commonly occurring on the facial sides and it is um, popular these days because it is a very accurate uh, procedure that has a very high cure rate so in layman's terms once you've gone through a Mohs procedure you have between 97 and 99 percent cure rate in other words there will be no recurrence of that tumor uh, following your Mohs treatment. The treatment itself is, is done as an outpatient procedure. The patients come in, they have their surgery, they have their tumours removed um, with minimal normal tissue being taken which cosmet cosmetically has advantages, particularly if it's on the face. And this process is done by um, taking tissue in layers um, at stages, evaluating these with frozen sections and H&E staining invariably. Some people use toluene blue and then determining whether the tumour has been cleared. Um, and this continues all day long until the patient is completely clear of its tumour, his tumour, her tumour. And then they, uh, they will have the wound repaired. But the benefit is that it is a high cure rate and there is preservation of normal uninvolved tissue which doesn't happen with other surgical procedures in the same degree. This is why it's popular. I thought we'd reflect on actually uh, where these tumours that we're excising originate in the skin. And so I have with me here a model, a schematic model of the structure of the skin. And the tumours that we are talking about are the basal cell carcinoma, and as its name implies, basal, arises from the basal layer of the epidermis. Sometimes they may arise from hair follicles too, as in this structure here. The second tumour is the squamous cell carcinoma. Again, like the basal cell carcinoma, it is derived from the same cell type, which is a keratinocyte. And the keratinocytes reside predominantly within the epidermal compartment here, and down the hair follicles. And the third tumour is different to the other two, from the other two because it's, it's derived from a cell called a melanocyte. This is the lentigo maligna melanoma. And the melanocytes again, however, are found predominantly scattered throughout the epidermal compartment, most notably along the basal layer. And so that encompasses the three main types of tumours where Mohs micrographic surgery is employed. Now to explain Mohs in a little bit more detail, I've used, I'm going to use a little demonstration for you here. I'm, I'm taking a normal uh, sliced loaf, which you can see in front of me. Now, in normal histological procedures in a routine laboratory, one would sample, let's assume, of course, that the loaf is in fact a tumour. Let's assume that. This is the tumour. And we are sampling that tumour by taking transverse slices through the loaf. So any one slice, let me explain, taking from the middle here, would represent a transverse slice of the tumour. And we would see that when we prepared the section and produced a glass slide, such that we'd see the top, the epidermal compartment, the dermal compartment, and the basal area of the tissue taken, and the two edges. But of course, this is one slice of a loaf of 30 or so slices. And reality is, we take several slices when we evaluate any given tumour routinely, but we don't take it all and we don't evaluate all of it. There lies the difference between Mohs procedures and conventional histological procedures, in that 
In routine histology, we sample the tissue, but in MOSE, we assess the complete circumferential and the peripheral and deep margins of the tumour. So it's a very holistic assessment of the entire lesion. Because you're doing that, it is a much more accurate assessment in true terms because you've assessed everything. You've not left anything to chance there and it has a success rate of between 97 and 99 percent depending on which literature you are reading and also on which anatomical sites they're being assessed. But the cure rate is extremely high. And that is done by this constant uh, reassessments of layers of tissue taken throughout a day where you're assessing bits of the tissue at a time to minimally excise the exact area where the tumour has arisen, only taking affected cells with very little normal tissue removed and therefore preserving the architecture of that patient's face or any other anatomical site you may be doing those on. And that is uh, the technique in a nutshell. Just to summarise then, Mohs has four main significant benefits. The first is that it's useful when you're assessing tumours which have a high risk of recurrence or, or you're dealing with tumours that have already recurred following a previous surgical procedure that isn't Mohs. So using Mohs in those circumstances is beneficial. That's one. The second one is, is in removing tumours which are located in very um, uh, awkward sites for where you need to have good preservation of the normal uh, tissue architecture. This would really encompass anything on your face, to be honest. The third main reason is that it's very useful when you're assessing tumours which have an ill-defined, clinically ill-defined border. So you're not clear whether the tumour is actually finishing clinically. So doing MOS is actually beneficial in those circumstances. And the final one is one where you can use it where you know you are dealing with a particularly aggressive, infiltrative, invasive tumour. Mose is very useful to try and deal with those cases as well. Those are the four main reasons it has clear usefulness.